Hello, brothers and sisters. Cameron here. I hope that your uh, I hope that your weekend is going well, and I have some updates. So, part four, very exciting, of Mark Albert's National Investigative Report uh, and and series. It's turning out to be a little bit more than what we originally thought it would be. Um, has a part four, and it just launched last night. So, I'm going to be dropping this video hopefully hopefully today, depending on when you can see this. And it's about Lexi Nunez's case in Montana. What's really interesting is they got access into the court, which hardly anyone ever gets to do ever. They got access to that, and they got to they have live footage of, uh, of of what the judges say, what the elders defending, and what they said, and they have it on record. Um, Lexi Nunez won and was currently awarded thirty-five million dollars in this lawsuit against the cult, church, or religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, Watchtower, whatever you want to call it. For continuing to hide child abuse and the way that they got them and which is interesting if i've talked to erwin zalkin before what they're looking for is did the elders know about it beforehand and did they do anything about it after him afterwards and of course in most cases we don't always know because they don't communicate uh, elders aren't taught how to communicate they're taught they're taught that the no matter what the um the religion first even if it's you know hurting children destroying children's lives or destroying adults lives it's nothing is more important than the cult and the and the, and the uh it's them you know them versus the world them versus satan anyway and it's just uh, uh i was was interesting is i don't know how mark did it like this blows my mind that he was able um to interview an elder and you'll get to see that clip in the, in, in a little bit and i don't know what kind of magic this guy pulled out of his ass mark whatever you did if you're watching that's a fucking magic trick. I hope you know that. That's that's crazy to get a current believing JW. The guy was wearing sunglasses and shit, and uh, that guy's probably in trouble. <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't get disfellowship. Maybe he does get disfellowship and it wakes him the fuck up. Uh, but he wasn't, you know, like most elders are pussy ass bitch or bitch ass pussy, whatever you want to call it. Um, apologies to anyone who's sensitive to that type of language, but I'm so far beyond uh, caring what people think is judgment. I'm, I'm here to just say whatever I feel and it feels right in the moment. Because I'm not worried about people's judgment anymore. Uh, but a lot of JWs are definitely worried about people's judgment. Uh, and you shouldn't. As you grow as a person, I hope you can be comfortable with cursing and, and being yourself and saying whatever comes to your mind. As long as you're not hurting anybody. You're not hurting anybody. Anyway, I digress. Here's the clip. It's a two and a half minute, almost three minute clip of the latest episode. And I'll play that. Oh, and before I play the clip, you should stay until the end. I have a few words to say before that. Here in Billings, Montana, we got rare access to bring cameras into a state Supreme Court hearing to watch as the Jehovah's Witnesses battle to overturn a $35 million verdict against it, the largest of its kind in U.S. history. There was no clear and convincing evidence of malice to warrant a jury's finding of punitive damages. On Friday, an attorney no defended the Jehovah's Witnesses in the case of Lexi Nunez, who sat in the audience with her newborn. Nunez says she was abused multiple times as a child by a member of the Thompson Falls, Montana congregation. The elders, the church's local leaders, knew about the abuser because he had been accused of assaulting others. But they did not alert authorities, saying they did not have to under state law. The statute says who is a mandatory reporter. So what? So you have one person who's liable. That's not going to solve the problem when, the, when it's an institutional problem of cover-up. Nunez's attorney so, is Jim Malloy. The defendants did not report a known child abuser, and then Lexi continued to be abused. Do we really want to be looking into what's going on within church circles? Um, and doesn't that bring us right up against the First Amendment? At trial, elders defended their actions. We did not call the authorities, Elder Don Herberger acknowledged on the stand. When asked if the same thing happened tomorrow, would you do the same thing? Herberger responded, yes. This week, we asked another leader at that same Kingdom Hall, Glenn Wilson, a similar question. Do you feel as though this Kingdom Hall should have done anything differently? I don't know what it would have been. Calling law enforcement when you heard about the allegations of abuse? Stopping the abuse? kicking the person out of the congregation, any of those things? Well, I don't have any comments on that. You Judgment's coming. Dan Sinet was one of the jurors in the trial. Everybody agreed that they were guilty. It shocked this town? It did shock this town. And he wouldn't cover the trial. Hello, how are you? As publisher of the Sanders County Ledger. The Supreme Court case 
is gonna affect a lot of other cases in the country. So I, I think the surprise of the magnitude of the case and the deep impact that it's having really affected our town. The court will take this matter under advisement. The Montana Supreme Court is expected to rule in the next several months. In Billings, Montana, I'm Chief National Investigative Correspondent Mark Albert. So now that you've seen that, it's it's been pretty interesting watching um, all of these updates. Mark is really going after it, and he's got uh, some other things planned. It sounds like, I mean, I was literally like, I just got, I saw some of my friends this morning, and they're like, hey, dude, I saw you on the news last night. I'm like, what? I didn't, I didn't know that they're, they're planning on a prime time special. That's so fucking cool, because they have all these four-hour updates. It would have, I didn't get the communication until now but they're planning on, on something and they're hoping for a special and all the, the little news pieces that they keep dropping are gaining a lot of attention because a lot of people have no idea how bad it is to actually be born and raised as Jehovah's Witness the, and how bad the pedophilia problem is. It's even worse than the Catholic Church. So they're hoping for a big special. We're really excited about that. I will update you. Subscribe if you're not already uh, so you can be uh, updated. And, and check out my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, at Cameron Fader. I have links in the description below. You can see some behind the scenes things, leave some comments and actually interact with me. I'm the most active there. I do have a separate Facebook fan page where you can like. Uh, please don't add me on Facebook on my real page because I, I that's just for my friends and family. Um, uh, even though I have it in bold, people still add me. I don't, I don't understand. But uh, um, unless I like have met you and know you in person, we're chill as fuck. Uh, just interact with me on Instagram because I'm actually the most active there. I actually, I, it takes me a little while because there's so many messages with life stories. I do respond. And if you've noticed, I am recording on my cell phone. So my, uh, my gear uh, all broke about a couple months ago. My camera broke. So I'm hoping I sound loud and clear on these AirPods and my cell phone. This is all I got right now. And my computer stopped turning on. So I am in need of your help. If you can help replace uh, or go to my GoFundMe and help me replace my gear, I will continue to fight because SB360, this bill that we're working on, if you haven't heard about it, is, I've been preaching it on and on and on, over and over and over because there's a lot of new people in the channel, is a bill that we're pushing so that we can stop churches from hiding child abuse under penitent privilege, even if you're not a church, a secular business. Um, we're not for this bullshit anymore, so we're, we're about protecting children, period. And of course, you know, like taking the appropriate messages and asking. I got cut off by my timer. Uh, all uh, all people uh, need to be protected by this, and we're, California is oddly enough not the first state to do it, but it's one of very few. I think there's about five or six, maybe less than that. So, brothers and sisters, if you can donate to that GoFundMe, it would mean the world to me. I've spent three years of my life vlogging for free, making zero dollars because this is part of my passion, and uh, I want to fucking do something. I want to go out swinging as one of the XJWs that did the most for the community. And that's getting into systemic issues, uh, not addressing behaviors per person necessarily per se, because that's part of that own person's journey and growth, but systemic laws and issues that are pushed upon society, just like systemic racism. Like when, you know, Nixon was fucking president, he made the laws a lot more strict on a black person or a brown person in an area for having, you know, marijuana or some kind of drug in prison time was double what a white person would get. So bullshit like that, this is a systemic issue that I'm pushing. And then as time goes along, if you want to learn how lobbying works, what we're doing, I will be releasing information. I'm actually collaborating with the CCLA now, um, the California Civil Liberties Advocacy. I mean, they've been in there since the beginning. I'm collaborating with them the most on how does this work? How does lobbying work? How does bills work? How do you lend your voice? And especially if you're in the Northern California area, we might be having some lobby days next year and some meetups where you can be a part of some of this um, and learn the language, learn the culture, because you can make a huge difference. Um, there's other bills we're working on, like the, um, we're going after the, I mentioned it in the last video, and if you haven't seen those other videos, please watch them in order. Uh, in the last video, we talked about the statute of limitations. When someone turns 30, they can't report abuse anymore. It's bullshit, because some people in the organization, Mormons, Scientology included, wake up when they're 30, 40, 50. It doesn't make sense. We shouldn't put a time limit on it. Obviously, within, like, within reason like if as long as it's a legit case so brothers and sisters i will see you in the next video and i'm looking forward to hearing all your feedback and say hi to me on instagram see you next time.